Hi, I'm Ross Campbell. Welcome to Genry Digital Dialogues Face to Face. In this series, we talk to innovators and thought leaders who are helping us to shape the insurance of the future. And today, I'm joined by Professor Ulrich Wisloff. He's the inventor of Personal Activity Intelligence, or PI. It's an algorithm and a program that helps prolong life and prevent disease. Welcome, Ulrich. Thank you. Perhaps you could start by just telling us how you got involved in developing Pi. I became involved in Pi by having an idea that was spinning around in my head for many years, where I wanted to make sense of heart rate as a metric for physical activity. So the idea was to make a sense of heart rate, because all scientists, all medical doctors agree that heart rate is reflecting how your body is, uh, is responding to the physical activity that you undertake. How did you go about validating your thoughts? We have this fantastic population-based study in Norway called the Hunt Study that some research pioneers started in the mid-80s. And they invited the whole population in a certain part of Norway and they actually got 90% of the inhabitants to participate in the study and they did a complete checkup on their health. And this study has been undertaking every 10 years since that time. So we have... Now we have data on 120,000 people. So around 2007, my group undertook a part of this HUNT 3 study, a study called HUNT Fitness, where we invited 5,000 people to do exercise on a treadmill, where we measured their cardiorespiratory fitness, we measured their heart rate, and we, we had all kind of information how they did exercise and, and so on. And that's where we invented the, the, the PI algorithm. We saw that people that had a, a certain heart rate pattern over a week they had good health, and people that had a different heart rate pattern, they didn't have that good health. We also had these data from the mid-80s, so we went back to the 80s, we were plotting the data for these uh, people taking part in the 80s, and then we looked, okay, how did it go with them in the future, and we were able to validate the pi algorithm. So, so those that had 100 pi, uh, they were actually safe, and those that had less than 100 pi, they had a much higher risk of dying uh, early. So it's a, it's a very important number and it has been shown to be the single best predictor of, of future health. Because of the, the design of the hand studies, we were able to check did they live longer. And we found that they lived on average five to six years longer. And those that benefit the most, they actually live more than uh, 10 years longer than those that did not have 100 pi per week. So it's quite strong data. We had, have about 10,000 people that died in the material. So it's, it's not just a random number. It's, it's, uh, it's for real. So, how does a person go about earning pi? In 10,000 steps, if you walk uphill, it's really hard, and that's perhaps enough to earn 100 pi if you do that every day for a week. Or if you work on a flat surface, it's certainly not enough. And also people are tired of getting the failure message that you, you didn't reach your goal of 10,000 steps today. And I lived in Australia for a year, and they were cycling and swimming a lot, and they, they didn't get any steps at all. <laughs> but still, they, they were fit. So how does the Pi algorithm become personalized? So it's an algorithm that is based upon a heart rate pattern over a week, but it's highly dependent upon resting heart rate and maximal heart rate, and the response to the exercise in between those uh, limits. It's important to say that we found that if you follow today's advice for physical activity given by health authorities worldwide and you did not reach 100 pi, you were not on the safe side. Also opposite, if you did not fulfill today's advice for physical activity but had 100 pi or above, you were on the safe side. So, so I think it's a much more precise measure than today's advice. It's easier to understand for people. And also we know that the number one reason not to undertake physical activity is lack of time. And the research clearly shows that you don't need to exercise every day. You need a certain amount per week to protect your own health. And that means that you can put pie points in the, in the bank. And uh, so, so you can plan your week according to your busy lifestyle or family life. And what if I'm the sort of person who finds the, the activities I am able to do are not going to create 100 pie? Our experience is that most people can reach 100 pi. That said, we didn't see much health benefit of people getting less than 50 pi, but it was a huge benefit from getting 51 to 99 pi. So if you reach above 50 pi, and I'm 100% sure that every person on the planet can do that every week, then it's good for their health. We didn't see any additional benefit of getting 200 pi compared to 100 pi when it came to longevity. But of course we saw that 
the more pa you have, the higher the cardiorespiratory fitness goes. So, of course, you get other health benefits, but in terms of longevity, it was no benefit of having more than 100 pa. Thanks so much, Ulrich. It's been a real pleasure talking to you uh, and learning more about Pi. So look out for more short films in this series and thank you very much for watching.